All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the progress bar, the HTML5 built-in progress bar, how we can style it and how we can animate it. So first of all, the HTML itself. So it's a progress element. You can set min and max values to be allowed and then the value attribute gives you the current setting. So if I jump over here into Chrome, this is what it's gonna look like. And I've also opened it up in a bunch of other browsers. So I've got Firefox, Opera, Edge, and Safari. And all of this on Mac OS, obviously. So it's similar, but there are some differences in the default styling. And on Windows, you're gonna get a little bit different styling again, but this is the built-in styling. So we wanna know how we can set the background color, set this foreground color for the bar itself, um, how we can change properties and how we can get back to having these rounded corners. So we're going to look at all that and then animating it between different values. All right, so let's jump back into VS Code here. In the style section that I've got up top here, these are the four selectors that we're going to use. So progress by default, this is what we're going to have. And then there's a few pseudo classes two of them that are going to work for chrome edge and opera and one of them for firefox so we've got progress the default now background color if i were just to set this let's just set it to a nice light color we'll say pink if i jump back into the browser um, so here we are in safari and you can see i got this gray background now so nothing that I set, I said I wanted pink, but as soon as I set those properties, what's going to happen is this is now going to trigger in all the WebKit based ones. So Chrome, Edge, Opera, Safari, all of these are going to apply the WebKit style sheet for progress bar. Now, if I want to get rid of that, I can, but I'm gonna show you a few things first before we do that. Um, there is a new property called Accent Color. And I'm gonna be doing a video about this one a little bit, uh, well, probably next week. But the Accent Color, the progress bar is one of the things that this applies to. So let me go back to Chrome. So I'm still not getting the Accent Color. The Accent Color, is meant to target this thing right here. So we'll take out the background color and then all of a sudden accent color works. Okay, well, I still don't have this background color here because as soon as I set background color, I lose this. So I'm kind of going back and forth between which one of these is gonna work for me. In order to get rid of this WebKit style, what we can do is we can add the WebKit appearance selector or property rather, and we can set that to none. That is going to get rid of this WebKit style being applied, the WebKit style sheet being applied. Okay, so now I'm kind of back to where I was. I'm still not seeing the pink. I'm not getting this default, but it means with this now applied, I can use these pseudo classes and the WebKit progress bar is going to let me set the background color and the progress value is going to let me set what will be the accent color. And then this one is going to be the equivalent in Firefox to this. So let's take a look where we are right now with all these browsers. There we go. So we've set an accent color and a background color. So pink and orange red. Neither of them are showing up in Chrome. Neither of them are showing up in Safari, neither of them showing up in Edge, neither of them showing up in Opera, but in Firefox, we are getting that background color. So what we did by adding this one right here is this one was able to be applied. All right, so let's try adding these properties in here. Uh, this new accent color one, this was between September of 2021 and March of 2022. That's when all the browsers started supporting this property. The progress bar is only one of the things that um, it applies to, but 
we can put it in here because this in the future is going to be what we want to use. All right. And so we're going to get progress, progress bar, WebKit progress bar. This is going to be the background color for most of the browsers. So we can come in here and set our background color to pink. So I've got it Firefox still. Now we've get, we're getting it in Edge. We're getting it in Opera. We're getting it in Safari and in Chrome. So we have the background color set in all of these. And in this one, we're getting the background color in Firefox. This one right here is working in Firefox. With this turned on, we can set it here with this pseudo class for the other ones. And then our accent color, or sorry, background color. This is going to be the color of the bar and we're gonna do the same thing right here, background color. And this is going to give us all the other browsers. So we'll use the same thing that we're doing for the orange red, which eventually should be the one that just applies. We'll, we should be able to do the background color, but for the time being, this gives us in all the browsers, There we go. So with those properties, we're getting, jump back into here, shrink this a little bit, there we go. So we're getting pink as the background based on these two properties. We're getting orange, red, the accent color being applied with these two properties with this turned on. Okay, so there we have it. That is the basic styling. Other properties, if you want to put them in here, uh, we can do that. So if you want to do something like setting the height to something different. So let's say 20 pixels is going to be my height. And I want to get the rounded corners. So I can say 10 pixels. So that's half the height. I'm not seeing it here. And that's because we're dealing with progress. What's actually happening in the browser when we're trying to apply stuff to progress is this is what's being built internally. So there's progress and then there's a pseudo element being built right inside of here. And then another pseudo element inside that. So this is the progress value and this is the progress bar. And those are both pseudo elements being built inside the progress thing. So you have to target those things to get the styles to apply. All right, so let's just add our height and we'll add our border radius into all of these. So the height here should apply to the two things inside, but I can put the border radius on the two backgrounds and the foreground. And there we have it. So the inside part, the progress bar, the progress value, this part is rounded and the other pseudo element right here, WebKit progress bar gets the rounded as well. Now, if you want to do something with animation if you want to be able to move from one to the next. Oh, I'll just bring up the other browsers here just to show you that they are all getting these properties being applied. There we go. So we've got the rounded corners, we've got the height, we've got the colors being applied across all of them. All right, last one. When this moves to be able to animate it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a click listener onto the progress bar. So as I click on it, it's going to pick a random value and put that in there. So I have a, a query selector method to find my progress bar. And then I will just add a click listener to that. So PRG will add a click listener and the function that it's going to run will take ev.target, which is the progress bar itself. We're gonna get its value property this thing right here, and we're just going to set it to a random value. Let's say math.random. I could say times the ev.target.max. I know it's going to be 100, so I'll just do that. This way, when I click on it, it's just picking random values so I can see potentially transitions happening. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to come up here and into the same places that we were doing this before. So in the progress value and bar, we're going to add transitions. So when the width of this transitions, let's take 0.4 seconds. We'll do an ease in. There we go. So on those two things, there we go. So now we can see as it moves, we have a bit of a transition. So whatever the method is that you're using to change the actual value, maybe you're measuring the download progress of something, uh, which I have a video about that doing download progress with fetch. If you're doing something like that, or if you're doing some other calculation, you've got a, maybe you've got a service worker or a web worker that's running and doing some other process and you want to show some progress on that, you can be changing the value. And when you do change the value, the transition is on the width property. All right. So I hope that helps you out. A uh, link to the code from right here is listed in the description. So you can take a copy of that if you want. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.